Welcome back everyone. Here we go again on another foam project. This time we'll be making a commission piece for my friend Adam. Adam wanted me to make a laboratory to fit into his Detolf Ikea shelf. The inspiration from this piece will be Beast from X-Men the Animated Series. Let's take a look at all the supplies, tools, and materials we're going to need on this build. We're going to need cardboard and foam, our handy dandy magnets, don't forget your cutting tools, some bibs and bobs of plastic, 3D printed pieces, trusty pen and pencil, some craft sticks, and your glue. Here's a new toy, hot wire tool. This channel is about three things, learning, teaching, and building. And if we have some fun along the way, that'd be all right too. But now with all that out of the way, I'm gonna go make something. We're gonna start the build with the countertops. These are made using a new type of foam that is called XPS. XPS is extruded polystyrene foam and it's a rigid insulation that's formed with polystyrene polymer. Pretty cool, huh? This new piece of equipment that I'm using is called a hot wire tool. A hot wire tool works by passing low voltage DC through a resistive wire, cutting through the foam like a hot knife through butter. I'll leave a link in the description down below where I got mine on Amazon. I'm gluing these pieces together with a lean stacky glue. This is a dollar store favorite. Since I want a lower profile for the countertops, I'm using the dollar store foam that I usually use in my other builds. This will also be used for the front of the drawers. Now I'm measuring out where I'd like the lines to be for the drawers. Let's get that countertop on. You can use your paintbrush to apply the glue. Just make sure when you're done that you rinse it thoroughly. I used another piece to lift it off the floor so it would look more like a countertop. When I started planning this, I knew I wanted two separate countertops. Making these two separate pieces will allow for customization and keep the piece feeling fresh. This type of hot wire tool doesn't have a straight edge on it, so I have to guide it using both my hands. Hopefully here soon I'll be able to design something that I can clip on to give me even straighter lines. So these didn't feel just like plain pieces of foam. I added two little cutouts on the larger doors to kind of give a handle effect. Sometimes when you cut into foam, you can get these little burrs. Drag the edge of the knife along the foam and you can clean it up. 
Here's another reminder, clean your brush after you use it with the glue. Now we move on to the shelves. I feel like the countertops would be a little plain without having something where you can put some books, beakers, or chemicals. So this looked great, but after putting it with the countertop, I felt like it was just a little too small. I still used it, but I ended up making a whole nother one. I'm using hot glue this time because a lane second glue would take too long to set up, and as it's in a funky spot, it would just be hard to get it to set. I wanted these drawers to have more of a low profile, so I used a piece of cardboard. You can use anything from a cereal box or a box of pasta. I use the recycled box of my action figures. Remember everyone, we can do our part. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Next is the outline for the door. I wanted to give it a little bit of a sci-fi 90s feel, so there's lots of hard lines, 45 degree angles, and whatnot. Back to my hot wire tool. Now this thing is nasty, so make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area as the foam puts off this really noxious smell. As the three walls and floor were really basically just squares, I didn't feel like cutting them out was something you guys needed to see. So what I'm doing now is putting lines down to give the effect of paneling and flooring. Not nearly as many lines as I did for the tiles in my subway video. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the description down below for both of those, part one and part two. Once you get that first line down, go back over with a pen or a pencil and really help define the lines.
I didn't like how my lines were looking, so I decided to go back over with my box cutter. You can do this, but just make sure you don't cut all the way through. Now we're moving on to one of my favorite parts, the magnets. These are the magnets I used in my last video. I'll leave a link in the description down below where I got them on Amazon. This little pink tool is a biopsy punch and it helps cut out a little perfect hole for my magnets. I use hot glue to keep the magnet in and once it's set, I put a little bit on the top and then move the hot glue around with the tip to help set it. This helps so when we unattach and reattach the walls and the floor, it doesn't pull the magnet out because they're pretty strong. So I'm really proud with how this turned out. I planned for this to be collapsible, but also customizable. So the left and the right walls are able to be interchanged. Now we're back with the Elaine stacking glue. The stuff's really slippery when it's wet, so until it sets, make sure you put something heavy on top. Now this is a tricky part. I had seen people do this before, and now I thought I'd give it a try. The hot wire tool is cutting through, and when I get to the corner, I flip the switch and turn it off. This allows the wire to cool, so I can turn the piece and continue moving. I do this again in the third and fourth corners. Once I make the cut along the bottom, I turn the switch off again and remove the piece. Now a tricky part. I want the profile of this piece to be cut in half as this will give a little more depth to the door. Now that this is in two pieces, I return it back to the hole where I cut it and it helps give it a more dynamic look. I seal the hole where I made the first cut with some hot glue. Then I'm going to add some cardboard to help keep the piece a little more sturdy. We're going to use some hot glue to put the door back in place and it should be good to go. Now on to the accent for the door. I want this to have a very 90s feel, so it's going to have a big steel door with a slatted window to see through. Off camera, I made a few details like the line around the door and this little triangle piece. Helps give it kind of that sci-fi feel. Adam and I had talked about making some kind of support structure so that you can hang action figures from, whether it be rafters or some kind of pipe. We decided to go with a pipe. This is made from recycled plastic pieces, wooden dowel rods from the dollar store, and some cake pop sticks. The great thing about these wooden dowels was they were e really easy to carve into. I shaved them down so they were able to fit snugly inside the plastic pieces. I feel like part of the build was a little too bland. So what I am doing here is I am applying a lean stacky glue to a piece of paper and I'm wrapping it up tight. The glue is soaked completely into the paper, and by the time that it's dried, it's going to be rock solid. So to make this more than decorative, I applied hot glue to the wooden dowels in the plastic pieces. 
once this sets, it really helps to make the piece feel more sturdy. Now that we have everything built, let's see how it looks. Well, everyone, I knew that when I started this project, it was going to be a long one, just like last time. Part two, we're going to do painting and priming. Uh, the 3D pieces I got, uh, are, they're going to need a little bit of touch up. I do have some smaller projects planned, um, and hopefully I can get those in, in one video. Let me know down below if that's something you'd like. Do you like the two part videos or would you rather me just put everything in one? And yes, to appease the algorithm, uh, I'm going to say it again, so you guys help me. Like, comment, and share uh, with all your friends and family. And uh, your shares and likes and comments gets me more subscribers. And uh, yeah, go subscribe too. I'm getting a lot more confident with my building, and I really hope that that's coming through with the videos. But all that really comes from the comments and the likes and the shares from all of you guys. So deep down in my heart, I want to say thank you guys. I appreciate everything you've done. And with that, I'll see you guys next time in Chapter 3, Part 2.